All right, well, welcome to my, um, I think, fifth live stream. Um, I have chosen a new topic here. I'm going to be developing a complete game from start to finish that I uh, put a brief poll out on Twitter. Um, I'm sorry, Reddit. And uh, it wasn't up for very long, and I didn't get any suggestions, so I just picked my own idea. The game is going to be called Duck of Doom. And the whole idea here is to uh, live stream the complete development of a game from start to finish using Unity 3D. Um, I wanted to go over the tools that I'll be using. So you can either, um, if you want to follow along and try to uh, create a video game yourself, or if you're watching the stream or archive videos later, um, you can uh, see what I was using or some free alternatives. So the tools I'll be using are on the left and the suggested free alternative is going to be on the right. So uh, Unity 3D 2017, Adobe Photoshop, Audacity, Silo 2, Mudbox, and Blender. And uh, if you see on the right is the suggested free tool. Um, in several cases, the free tool is the same as the one that I'll be using. Uh, as in the case of Unity 3D, that is free, unless you make so much money that uh, you pass their license boundary of $100,000 a year, then you'll have to pay for it. Um, Paint.net or GIMP, those are very nice alternatives to Photoshop. Um, I would say you can subscribe to Photoshop on their Creative Cloud suite for a relatively low price. Um, I bought the full version a while ago because I do so much art, so it just seemed worth it to me. Um, Audacity is free. Silo 2 you can get on Steam. Um, I got mine on sale for like 20 bucks a while ago, but uh, I do not know the current price. What I like about it is it's very straightforward. We'll go over that more later when I'm using it. But a really great alternative is Blender, and it is free. Mudbox is a sculpting tool. There are other sculpting tools such as ZBrush. Uh, Blender itself all does, also does sculpting. It's very functional. Um, I just learned in Mudbox, and I find it a little bit more efficient for my workflow. And then um, I will actually be using Blender for uh, animation. So um, and, uh, Blender is the alternative. So um, that's the tools. I may incidentally use some other things along the way, like a text editor, or um, shouldn't be anything of particular expense or note. But um, if that happens, um, just go with the flow, man. So um, the idea where Duck of Doom came from, I uh, just was thinking of silly ideas. And um, but I was thinking of the Duck Hunt video game. So there was an old Super Nintendo game called Duck Hunt. And my current little video game company I, I call Doom Metal Games. Uh, so I wanted to do a kind of Doom inspired <laughs> Duck Hunt game. <laughs> and it's just for fun. Uh, the whole idea here is to make something very simple and small to have a successful demonstration of what it looks like to go from start to finish right not to make something horribly complex that will be streaming for the next two years um, this should be hopefully a really short video series so um, in the duck hunt video game this little dog would come out and he would flush out uh, ducks and they would fly around um, and then you would have to try to shoot them and you, your score would correspond to how quickly you could shoot them or not so the first thing I like to do is define what the game is I'm making, what the requirements are. So to do that, you can uh, either use a piece of paper, but I'm actually going to use a notepad here. And what this will do is uh, let you see what my requirements are going to be. So when you're starting off, I recommend you, you write down everything of all your goals are in either pseudocode or ordered list or what have you. So we're going to need a uh, main menu screen that has, uh, has a play and quit button. Okay, so that's going to be a to-do item for our game. Uh, we need a play screen that has the gameplay and a <coughs> game over quit buttons. Okay, and then we need um, a duck. And then we also need the duck of doom. And I will explain that more in a minute here. And then I haven't decided, but um, <coughs> we could give a 3D representation of an actual rifle barrel, kind of like a VR-ish first-person perspective uh, that follows your mouse around. So um, 
I think that's kind of a fun idea, so let's go for it. So a uh, three a uh, model of a rifle barrel. Okay. And then I'm just going to put over here uh, plus sounds animations for this. And this guy is going to be very similar. He might have the same model, but a different skin and textures or what have you. And then we need um, some UI for scoring and uh, what other elements we come up with. And then um, we'll need the uh, code for the gameplay logic. So like with any list, when you start off, you might say, well, gosh, that's kind of overtly simple. Or some of those steps are actually like 30 steps. And that's fine. Um, any list can grow organically. It's like what they call a living design document. Um, as you discover more items, add them to the list, right? That's perfectly OK. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this out because we'll try to refer to this as we go along through the sequence here. Uh, and I have made a special folder for this under my game dev duck of doom. So this is the to do for duck of doom. All right. There you go. So. Um, I sort of started on a main menu screen because I needed it for the Twitch uh, banner. But um, let's go to Photoshop and we'll go back over here. Um, this would be either a main menu or a, um, what you call it, a banner. But let's just make it the main menu for now. Um, but I'm going to recreate it for you as part of the lesson. So let's do a new document. And I'm just going to accept my current screen size for the moment. Um, over time, um, if you're choosing to deploy to say mobile specifically, um, making certain optimizations would be more important. But this is just a quick lesson, um, so we're not going to over focus on optimization. So uh, a lot of arcade games had a black background. Um, if we go back here, this is kind of the box um, that a lot of Nintendo things uh, um, kind of the art style was very common so I'm gonna that's where I modeled that after so um, in Photoshop I like using let me change the color so it's a little visible when I type it so duck of and then I'm gonna press control T for my transformation tool and just make it nice and big and then I'm gonna clone that text and bring it down modify the text again we're just kind of recreating what you saw a minute ago let me make this even bigger because I think doom should be on this all right so uh, this is a feature I've talked about before and you will hear me talking about again but um, in Photoshop this is just just one of the coolest features ever is styles you can download styles off the internet uh, there are many open source and free styles, so if you just Google Photoshop styles, um, if you're using Photoshop. If not, see if there is such a thing for whatever tool you're using, Paint.net or GIMP. There's probably uh, similar things. So if you see here, here's a bunch of styles people have made that do look kind of different cool ways, like glowy buttons, stuff that looks like metal. So if you have a game idea, uh, here's stuff that's got little lava glows. Um, you could find a style that will probably match your vision or type style that you want. I happen to get some packages that have like larger varieties of them. So I'm going to highlight Doom. And as you see, as I click on each one of these, um, it makes a really beautiful gradient and outlines and things that are probably, uh, for most of us, if you're not artistically inclined, uh, would be very hard to recreate for you. So this style thing is just like a brilliant shortcut to uh, reasonable graphics. Okay, I like that one a lot. And let's go. So I, I think on my title I had something like that. But let's just poke around, see. Again, this is really quick, so I can experiment with things that look good or not. <laughs> know why I'm gravitating towards blue but it's my gut feeling and I'm sticking with it see to me that gives kind of a 8-bit feel for some reason part of
partially because of the font I've chosen. There you go. I like that. So it gives a little bit of contrast to the um, text below. All right, so I'm going to highlight both of these, and Photoshop has these transformation controls. Um, I always forget which is which, but it allows you to kind of line things up either um, against each other or left to justify or right justify. Let's see, that's uh, not the ones, but made them left justify there. So we want this of text to at least visually appear to kind of align with the right edge. All right, and then there's going to be like a play and a quit button down here, but those will actually be part of the UI. So there's two approaches I could take here. One would be to put this on an atlas and then make the uh, Unity screen have its own kind of um, black background. And the other is to actually save out the image file exactly like you see it here. The advantage of saving it as a flat file is there's no transparency and that's less rendering that the video card has to do. But um, in this case, I said, let's not worry about optimization. So instead what I'm gonna do Let's go ahead and create, actually, let's just use this image. I'm going to remove the background, and then I'm going to change the canvas size to 2048 by 2048. So this is an important thing to know, is that in video games, many of the graphics that you will create need to be a power of two because uh, the video memory can hold that efficiently. If you made something that's not a power of two, it may get squashed or stretched to fit in when it draws and they look fuzzy and you don't know why. So this is gonna be our Atlas. Unity is pretty cool because, <coughs> oh, I haven't created the project yet. So let me just save it in here. So back Atlas Photoshop. Uh, Unity holds your hand and will read many image styles and translate it into a format that it is um, okay with using. So in this case, the native Photoshop format is fine. So this is Unity 2017, as I mentioned. I'm gonna make a brand new project. Back of Doom. It's in my projects folder. I'm gonna default to being a 3D package. I'm not gonna add any additional assets and I don't know if I'll ever publish this, um, but sure, analytics, that can be done. <coughs> okay, so here is a default project. Um, you can change your layout to whatever feels a little bit more comfortable for you. In some cases, um, I change this just because I'm more working on the hierarchy of the scene or I'm more working in the 3D window. So it might be situational what is comfortable for you. So the first thing a lot of people like to do is in this assets folder, this is where a lot of your subfolders are gonna go. Uh, I like to go ahead and create a couple of folders, one for code and then one for some of my art. And so you could call that art or media or images just whatever works so today i'm going to call it media and then one for prefabs because unity likes using prefabs for everything and there's a couple other folders we could make but that's what i'm going to start with for now so go back to photoshop and now we're going to save this atlas inside the where my unity projects are Back of Doom, Assets, Media, Save. Go back here, and then Unity to do a little bit of uh, thinking for a second. And in my media, there is my atlas. So I will need to change the properties of this atlas. A default image um, usually has um, one image on it. In this case, we want this to have multiple images. <laughs> Sorry, that default 2D. There we go. Apply that. So I'm going to make a selection marquee. 
this is going to be the title graphic apply it and actually I should trim it so then I'm going to save the open scene as in the prefabs as the new menu And let me just check that I am in fact streaming it. It says I am. Okay. So um, now we have a scene and we have a graphic. So in the scene, I need to create a UI and that begins with a canvas. So when I'm in the UI canvas mode, it's good to go to 2D. So the main camera, I'm going to change to be having a black skybox. Uh, let's do solid color here again um, and then let's go to our canvas and apply a UI oh it's a panel because it already has an image on it and then no, it's too big we need to go <laughs> should be a preserve aspect there we go and let's go to the game scene good and the reason that looks so faded is the alpha channel here there you go all right so that's our main menu now this canvas we want to be anchored in the center so if i hold down it tells you at the top alt or shift you get little you notice when i'm pressing these keys little different anchoring things so I'm doing one of the center alignments. So as a child of the parent canvas, we're going to make a new button and then control D to clone that button back to the scene view. This button, we're going to tell it to go in the bottom right corner just for the moment. And this button we're going to tell it to go bottom right I'm sorry I might have said bottom right for both this one was left obviously and then let's make these buttons a little bigger and get more specific about these later let's expand and change the text uh, this text is going to be play and actually make that one quit <laughs> I can tell. All right, and then we also need to make the text in both um, best fit. There you go. And then let's make the <coughs> buttons themselves be. Uh, this will look better in the game view. So the white obviously doesn't work super well. Let's see if we can color sample. Yeah, let's color me. Yeah, it's okay for now. We might actually make real buttons later. This is get us started. Okay, so file save scenes. <coughs> okay, so there's our first scene. Then we're gonna go file new scene. Just save it right away, save scene as, prefabs, this is going to be the uh, play, uh, see, yeah. it's a little redundant, but, okay, so, I'm going to go back to the main menu, so what's going to happen is, we'll be in here, um, if you ran the game, click play, it should take you to the play scene. If you click quit, it should exit the application. So let's go back and look at our to-do list and say it has a play and a quit button. So let's drill down on that a little bit more. Again, maybe this is too specific for some people, but if you're just getting started, drilling down on this. Uh, play button will send user to the play scene. Quit button will exit the application. Okay. 
So now we know we've got a, some of this kind of set up and ready to program, but let's go ahead and set up. So when we go to the play screen, it has the, the main gameplay and a game over and or quit button. So game over is actually more of a game over message and a quit button. All right. So go back to the play scene and very similar here. Um, I haven't decided what the scene's gonna look like. I kinda wanna just go with a black background for simplicity and the ducks might end up being, I'm thinking a black and white game. Uh, we'll see, maybe that just doesn't work. <coughs> but I think it would be kinda cool. So uh, we will at least start with that idea. Let's do, oops, camera, solid color, we'll do black. And let's get an object rolling canvas and <coughs> create a panel go to the 2d view so in this case i don't want that panel taking the entire background i want to have a little bit of a ui at the top or bottom again this um let's go back to my deck head search um Search again. We're not going to particularly clone this, but um, just taking ideas of a classic video game layouts because we want it to have a little retro feel. You know, it's a little bit of inspiration. So, yeah, they had a lot of the UI down here tucked at the bottom. There's no reason it couldn't be at the top, too, except for when we talk about what we're hunting, ducks. Um, the sky is going to be where the ducks are at. So it just makes more sense for it to be at the bottom, right? And in this case, they had stuff for... Where is I thought they wanted to have it just show the image. No. View saved. Maybe. Nope, that's the saved page. Well, it's fine to be that way. Um, in any case, um, this will kind of work. So let's make this panel more opaque for now. We might make it transparent later. But um, let's make it a little bit clear that this is blocked out for the UI, okay? So that kind of blue-gray panel at the bottom. And then we do need a quit button. It's gonna be inside the, oh wait. Um, let's tell this panel, if I hold Shift and Alt at the same time, and it's anchored to the bottom, see the little dot? And it's flush left and right. So hypothetically, no matter how big I make this, it'll stretch to fit that, and it'll stay at the bottom like 20% of the screen. Inside there, we want a button. And for now, I'm gonna anchor that against the right-hand side. And in this case, it's not gonna be as big as those other ones, but we make it just a little bit taller. And we will say quit. And then I don't know why. I, I really often like to do these in all caps. I just think it's more readable. Okay, and then before we had those buttons being kind of a cyan bluish color. We'll just stick with that for now. And we haven't decided what the other uh, UI elements are going to be yet. So let's save the scene, go back to our list, and see how we're doing. So we had all this already done. Now we made a play. It says screen, but we'll do scene that has the gameplay. That has, and we go make our list more specific gameplay. Has a game over message. And a quit button. So, as you see, we do have the scene. We don't have gameplay. We do have a quit button, but we don't have a game over message. So let's make inside this panel a UI uh, text. And here is the time when I'm going to go ahead and go to the asset store. This isn't in by default. There is something called Text Mesh Pro that I would recommend everybody use. 
that Unity purchased and is now free for everybody, but it's not quite integrated yet. So I'm going to update and install this. And as you see in the little preview image back there, that uh, just disappeared as I talked about it. But um, it allows you to apply advanced lighting and texturing and uh, more font styling than the default Unity text, so that's why I really like it. So instead, I think now, if I recall, um, now we have an option for UI text, mesh pro text. Yeah. All right. I'm going to close this tab. And then let's title this Remover. Oh, and I put it in the wrong. Mm -hmm. This one. And let's center it. There we go. This is the big one. So we definitely want this to be bigger. Let's try to <laughs> Alright, see this is the size of that text box, so that's why it's having problems with that. And let's scale this to be center. There we go. So by using that alignment again now what we're doing is telling it to be more uniformly where we think it should be. I'll make it bold. And yeah, that's fine for now. And this uh, Text Mesh Pro has some default fonts. Um, we can um, load other fonts in. And as you see, some of these have, like one of these has a little bit of a material and effect for it. But um, let's keep it basic for now. Like you can spend all day playing with this stuff, but we're trying to kind of get the game uh, going as quick as possible. Okay, so um, I'm going to rename this to Game Over Text Mesh Pro Text. It doesn't have to say Text Mesh Pro Text, but that just helps me kind of remember what's going on. And then my recommendation is um, to name your canvases uh, Play Canvas. I'll make a prefab out of it. Save the scene. Now I'm going to go back to the main menu and then we'll name this the new canvas and make a prefab out of it. There we go. All right. So let's take a look now. So we have satisfied these criteria. So I'm actually just going to go, well, actually, I'm not going to mark them off. And the reason why is they don't uh, work functionally in the programming sense yet. And so from here on down is we're getting into 3 D modeling and such. And today what I just want to do is get these menus working uh, for the first stream. So this is what we're going to try to accomplish minus gameplay. Because um, this might take, say, 8 hours or 10 hours or 12 hours worth of work for all I know although we're going to try to do it as quickly as possible. But um, I have to go get groceries and, <laughs> and do things, so I can't do it all in one stream. All right, so let's go and open up our C Sharp project. Now, if you're on a Mac, um, I don't know if it's going to open Visual Studio or Mono Develop. On a PC, it will normally open Visual Studio, but I happen to have uh, this IDE called Writer, made by JetBrains. Um, I purchased it. You can evaluate it for 30 days for free. Um, if you are a noob and uh, just getting all these tools for free, just stick with whatever the you know Visual Studio or Mono Develop on the Mac. Um, they're very functional. Nothing wrong with them at all. Um, if you are feeling a little bit more professional and you start understanding what the tools are doing and you feel like um, there's some features worth you spending a little bit of money on, then it is sometimes worth buying a good tool like Adobe Photoshop or Writer.
Um, so, but don't feel obligated to use this IDE. 99% um, of what I show you will be exactly the same in whichever one you do. Just takes another moment to grade here. And here we go. Okay, I think that's it. So there's our assets folder. And the only code in there right now is the text mesh pro stuff we just imported. And let's recompile this just a little bit. We're going to go in here. We're going to create um, a folder for UI code. And then in here, we're going to create a C sharp script called the menu controller. And then we're going to make another, come on now, create C sharp script called tiny menu behavior. And you can name them whatever you want, however your thinking works is fine. So double click on this, and it should open in the IDE. Okay. So. In Unity, most of the things that need to interact with the scene and that have interaction with game objects are going to be extending mono behavior. So that's this little colon. So this is the name of the file we just made, or the class, they call it. See the class. And it's the main menu controller, and it extends mono behavior. And the reason for that is we could do something like a public game object. Uh, uh, main menu canvas, right? So I'll save that. We'll go back, it recompiles. And then <coughs> you can attach these scripts to the canvas itself, the camera, or I often like to create an empty one and name it my game controller object really doesn't matter whatever makes you comfortable but then you can drag and drop your script on there and then notice now that public variable I made I can actually put this in there and that is possible because of this mono behavior and this public object here now I named it main menu canvas because I knew I wanted to put the main menu canvas in here and this is only for demonstration purposes right now I don't actually have a function <coughs> I want to do with this at the moment but the example would be if you wanted to have multiple menuing systems and we might like a high scores or like um, some online functions or some in-app purchases or different things so you might want this main menu to have these functions and they press on um, you know the high scores menu and then this gets disabled programmatically and then the high scores menu gets activated programmatically so by making that reference in here we can have those kind of things come about so we probably will add some high scores because I think that's a fun component of games and that might be one of our stretch goals if this doesn't get too long um, but for now let's go back and enable the play and quit buttons so we don't need these methods. Those are when we're kind of doing kind of game logic. We want a public void play game. And we want a public void quit game. And so public means again that, let me save, uh, that it's going to be a publicly available like this here you can see it if it was private you could not see this here and that's a concept called encapsulation uh, you can google that or get more into it or my recommendation is through the use of it over time you start getting a feel for what it means and then you go look up what encapsulation <laughs> means and then kind of through practice you go oh, oh oh that's what i was doing right but um the public and private thing helps you enforce a proper control of your object when things should just be internal to the function of what it's doing or when it needs to be external like this okay so in this case unity recently changed the methods for scene management we'll see if I can remember Unity scene. Mm 
<laughs> we'll do a team the engine dot team the engine. Okay, that's probably it. Now, if you didn't know those things, you would go open the Google and say Unity 3D uh, Crit Game. And, oh, look at that, Unity Scripting API, Application Quit. So um, Google is your friend, and you will find many, 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 many times that you have no idea uh, what you're doing. Um, this API reference is pretty darn good. And in some cases, um, if your question isn't answered directly here, they'll be like, here, look, here's a tutorial. Um, same kind of thing I'm doing today and other people when they have problems. So just, just use Google to kind of struggle your way through. Over time, you'll get a little bit more experience and feel better about it. All right, so there's several ways to do this, but let's do it the easiest way possible. So Unity has some of these on-click handlers that are part of a button functionality. So uh, it would be better for us if we name our buttons. So this happens to be the quit button. And this happens to be the play button. So the on click method handler, I'm gonna put a plus. I'm gonna drag in the game controller. Then I'm gonna tell the main menu controller that I want the play game function. Apply it quit button, expand the on click handler, put in my game controller, tell the main menu controller that I want the quit game function, apply. So now in our build settings we have to add scenes to it, otherwise it does not know how to reference them. And then I'm going to do a build and run. What I always like to do is uh, create a new folder and call it builds so that when I add this to my version control system, which you should definitely do, um, that uh, I can exclude builds because they get really big and there's there's no reason to put that under version control. So doc of doom exe save it. And now it's building. I'm going to do a windowed mode here, make it a little smaller. Let's play. Duck of Doom. Play. And we didn't wire that button up yet. So, the play button works. And then let's go. Look at the file location. Go back here to builds. Let's run it again. Uh, 800 by 600 and now let's try the quit button and quits okay those work so now let's go back to the play scene let's save and we want to wire up this quit button so what are we going to do well we already made the main menu controller or the, the play menu behavior and we're going to do essentially the same thing as this right here right so let's just copy that and then we will rename it to quit game and you notice it's red and the reason it's red is because we didn't have this scene management thingy and our IDE tries to be smart and it tells you well hey man there's a problem here and it actually says oh well do you want to go ahead and import this type up here and then look at that it's fixed it up for us so that's where having a nice IDE is a substitution for you might have put that in there and go well 
man, I don't know what's going on. And you're Googling and you're having all these problems. But the nice IDE that tells you what those things are is super awesome. So now we want to go backwards. We want to go to main menu instead of placing. And you do have to capitalize it correctly. Go back over here. So now before I'm, I totally built the game and launched it because I wanted to be able to test the application quit properly um, because it really needed to exit the application. But from here on out, most of the time we will not do a build. Um, we will just do it in game. So if I come up here and press play, it should now be in play mode. That goes to the scene and then this should take me back. No, it shouldn't because I didn't do the other half. So here's where we go back and we tell it to be more specific. This is the quit button, the on click handler. And then what I didn't do, so let's create an empty game object and we will call this um, game controller. Okay, and then we want to add the play menu. Oops. To handler. Okay, good. And then back to here. Now we can drag in the game controller. And the play menu behavior should have the quit game. Okay, much better. <coughs> Let's try again. Back to the main menu. Play. Quit. Okay. So, doing pretty good here. Have a couple more minutes for my uh, planned stream here. So, the next thing we're going to do is the game over text. We could handle this a couple of ways. By default, of course, it needs to be disabled. You should only see that when the game is in fact over. So we could go in here. And this is the, um, oh no, wrong, 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 wrong scene here. <laughs> there it is. I could simply click this, right? So it's disabled right now. Or it could leave it enabled and then in some script go and say on startup disable it and then when the right game state occurs then enable it there are times when either one of those might be necessary or appropriate um, for this particular use right now I'm going to go ahead and just disable it and then um, I'll make a little script that tells it to enable it but we won't have anything that calls it until we put in the gameplay programming for an end game state but we'll, we'll just go ahead and have this ready. So again, this is in the play menu behavior. So this method could be public or private. I'm going to think ahead a little bit and imagine that my gameplay state management is not gonna be in the play menu behavior, <laughs> right? <laughs> the menu doesn't control the game state. So I think this method needs to be public. So void um, display game over. And so then here, we get public game object game over text. And then game over text dot set active true. should be in the bottom right you can't see because of my logo but it just built and then that's it so when I program in some game state management which um, we'll probably get into on the next session um, that game state management will say oh hey I just detected that for whatever reason the conditions we decided on are that the game is over it'll go set active equals true which puts the check mark there and then bam we'll have that okay um, so that's all I wanted to cover today. This um, sets up the basic uh, menu handling, the setup of the project. Um, I think we'll probably try to do 
um, putting this under version control next time um, because that's a super important part that nobody should ever skip on a project that you're spending a lot of time on and then we will begin talking about what the gameplay is going to look like and um, we're going to need to create some 3d models but uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next session